In the previous seven parts of the flight control series, we understood the working mechanisms of all the flight control surfaces. In the final three installments, we will discover how the fly-by-wire system controls the aircraft in all three axes of flight. But before understanding the pitch, roll, and yaw control, it's important to understand the flight control architecture of the Boeing 777. The primary flight computer is the brain of the flight control system. Part of the computer software is the flight control laws. The software helps the computer perform several flight control functions to maintain the aircraft in the desired attitude. These functions are divided into three categories. First is control. A control surface command can be given manually by using the trim system or by the autopilot computer. When manual input is given, the actuator control electronics computer receives the signal. The ACE converts the analog signal into digital and sends it to the flight computer. The flight computer requires information from other aircraft systems to calculate the final control surface deflection. The most critical data is provided by the air data inertial reference system. The flight computer gets two types of information. Air data such as airspeed, vertical speed, altitude, and angle of attack. Inertial data such as aircraft position, attitude, acceleration, and angular velocity. When all data is available, the flight computer functions in normal mode. The final calculation is sent to the ACE. The ACE converts the digital signal to analog and operates the power control unit of the control surface. Position transducers give the rudder position signal. Releasing the pedal will return the rudder back to neutral. When the trim switch is used, a signal is sent to the flight computer through the ACE. The flight computer informs the ACE to operate the trim actuator and move the rudder pedal. Pedal movement results in rudder deflection. The rudder will be held in this position. To return the rudder to neutral, the trim selection has to be cancelled. The autopilot computer is not allowed to control the rudder in the majority of flight phases. The system when engaged can request a rudder deflection when the aircraft is in the approach phase and autoland is active. When it requests a rudder deflection, the flight computer operates the control surface. At the same time, the flight computer informs the autopilot to back drive the rudder pedal and match the rudder deflection. Once the autopilot request is complete, the rudder is returned to the neutral position. The second category of software function is stability augmentation. The aircraft is designed to be naturally stable in all three axes of flight, but strong wind disturbances can lead to an uncomfortable flight experience. The flight computer uses the control surfaces to reduce the gust effects and improve stability. The final category is protection. The flight computer maintains the aircraft in its normal flight envelope. However, if the limit is exceeded, the computer will help the pilot recover the aircraft. Now let's understand the yaw control features in detail. Yaw control is the ability to control the nose position of the aircraft using the rudder. The center of gravity is the average location of the aircraft weight. The yaw motion is controlled on the vertical axis through this point. The vertical stabilizer and the rudder combine to form a symmetrical aerofoil. They are designed to produce force in either the left or right direction. When the rudder is aligned with the vertical stabilizer, there is no side force acting on the aerofoil. If the rudder is deflected left, it changes the camber and turns the airflow. This creates a pressure difference between the two sides of the vertical stabilizer and generates a lift on the opposite side of the airflow turn, resulting in a torque induced through the vertical axis that drives the aircraft nose to the left. The rudder from its neutral position can deflect 27 degrees on either side. The tab travels twice the rudder deflection. The greater the deflection, the greater the airflow turn, and the greater the turn, the greater the lift. This is how the further deflection of the tab increases the effectiveness of the rudder. The flight computer calculates the rudder deflection using the rudder ratio software function. How much the rudder deflects affects the lift on the stabilizer. Another factor that affects the lift is airspeed. For a given rudder deflection, as airspeed increases, the lift will increase. Therefore, the flight computer will control the rudder based on airspeed using a ratio system. At an airspeed of around 130 knots, the rudder ratio is 1. 
the full travel of the pedal will deflect the rudder to its maximum of 27 degrees. As a result, the aircraft yaws at a particular rate. Now as the airspeed increases, the rudder ratio decreases. Which means the flight computer reduces the rudder deflection with increasing airspeed. This system is essential for two reasons. If the computer does not follow the ratio system and allows full deflection of the rudder at high airspeed, the increase in aerodynamic force on the control surface could result in catastrophic structural failure. Since the lift will be higher, the effectiveness of the rudder will increase and the aircraft yaw rate will be significantly high. Therefore, at an airspeed of around 430 knots, the full travel of the rudder pedal will result in a rudder deflection of 3 degrees. By reducing the deflection as speed increases, the effectiveness of the rudder is kept constant for the majority of the speed ranges, and the aerodynamic force on the rudder is kept within the threshold. Gust suppression. The relative wind is the airflow in the opposite direction to the aircraft flight path. Another factor that affects the lift on the symmetrical aerofoil is the angle of attack. There is no lift in either direction when the angle of attack is zero. If a strong gust of wind hits the vertical stabilizer from the side and disturbs the directional stability, it changes the angle of attack of the stabilizer to the relative wind. This causes the airflow around the stabilizer to turn, creating a pressure difference and inducing lift on the opposite side of the airflow turn. The force tries to restore the aircraft to its original attitude, but the momentum carries it further in the opposite direction. This changes the lift direction, and in a series of decreasing oscillations, the aircraft eventually stabilizes. This ability of the aircraft to return to its stable position, without any control surface input, is known as positive directional stability. However, the disturbance due to strong gusts can make the flight uncomfortable, especially for the passengers seated in the aft section. To counter the impact of gusts, the aircraft is equipped with pressure transducers that measure the pressure on both sides of the vertical stabilizer. When a gust hits the stabilizer, the two sides will have different pressures. Pressure will be greater on the side of impact. This pressure difference is monitored by the flight computer. As the gust impact starts to yaw the aircraft, the flight computer responds with a rudder deflection to the right. The gust suppression feature minimizes the impact of gusts and improves passenger comfort. Modal suppression. Strong wind disturbances induce bending and twisting forces on the aircraft structure. Aircraft structures are designed to be flexible and regain their shape once the load subsides. However, the natural body flexure of the fuselage, wings, and stabilizers causes vibration and induces structural oscillation in all three axes of flight. The most uncomfortable oscillation is the side-to-side -side movement of the aft fuselage. Wide-body aircraft that have a greater fuselage length, like the Boeing 777, are more susceptible to this oscillation. The modal suppression system has two accelerometers installed in the aft section of the fuselage. They measure the acceleration induced by the natural body flexure. The flight computer monitors this data and counters the oscillation by using the rudder. The modal suppression system helps reduce the vibration and structural oscillation. Yaw damper. The yaw damper software function on the Boeing 777 is used to prevent the Dutch roll. When a wind disturbance causes the aircraft to roll, Without any control surface input, the aircraft will recover in a series of decreasing left and right oscillations. The ability of the aircraft to recover from roll is known as positive lateral stability. Lateral and directional stability are interrelated. We will understand the lateral stability and the interrelation in the roll control chapter of the series. For now remember the roll motion causes a yaw motion and the yaw motion causes a roll motion. Therefore, an aircraft disturbed in roll will also be disturbed in yaw. Now as the aircraft tries to stabilize, the lateral stability being stronger than the directional stability recovers faster. The weaker directional stability lags behind and the aircraft enters an out-of-phase oscillation, known as the Dutch roll. The aircraft will eventually recover without any control surface input, but this will create an uncomfortable flight experience. To prevent the Dutch roll, the yaw damper software functions of the flight computer needs to know the yaw rate of the aircraft.
This information is received through the inertial data. When the flight computer notices the aircraft is about to enter the Dutch roll, it uses the rudder, and prevents the directional and lateral stability from going out of phase. This helps the aircraft recover faster. Thrust asymmetry compensation If the aircraft suffers an engine failure, it creates an asymmetric thrust condition. The thrust of the two engines is not equal, and this causes the aircraft to veer towards the left engine. To keep the aircraft flying straight, the asymmetric thrust has to be compensated by deflecting the rudder to the right. The rudder can be deflected manually, but constant rudder pedal force must be maintained. This will significantly add to the pilot workload. The aircraft has the rudder trim system for long-term rudder deflection. The trim actuator moves the rudder pedal and holds the position. By selecting the trim system, pilots can avoid the application of unwanted rudder pedal force and reduce their workload. On the 777, instead of trimming the aircraft manually, pilots can use the thrust asymmetry compensation function of the flight computer. When the thrust asymmetry compensation switch is in auto, the flight computer monitors the thrust produced by the engines using the data provided by the engine computer. When the flight computer notices a difference in thrust, it automatically compensates by operating the trim actuator. A further benefit of the TAC function is when changing the thrust of the working engine. In manual trim, the pilot has to re-trim the aircraft. In automatic trim, the flight computer continuously monitors the change in thrust and compensates by re-trimming the rudder. In the normal mode, all software functions related to yaw control are available. The Boeing 777 systems have a high level of redundancy. Even though complete failure of a system is uncommon, it has to be taken into consideration. If the data provided by the air data system is unreliable, or if the entire system fails, the primary flight computer cannot function in normal mode. Since it is dangerous to act upon unreliable data, the computer will switch to the secondary mode. It won't accept autopilot commands, and will disengage the system. The pilot has to take control of the aircraft. Most of the software functions will be disabled by the flight computer. The available functions will be in a degraded mode. The rudder ratio function relied on airspeed to accurately calculate the rudder deflection. Since the airspeed is unreliable, the computer will switch to flaps and slats position to determine the rudder deflection. If the flaps are in the up position, the computer will assume the aircraft is in a high-speed configuration, and if the flaps are in any other position, the aircraft is in a low-speed configuration. For a maximum pedal deflection with flaps down, the rudder will be deflected to its maximum of 27 degrees, and with flaps up condition, the deflection will be restricted to a maximum of 10 degrees. The effectiveness of the rudder will not be constant, but the rudder will be structurally protected at high airspeed. The yaw damper function will be available, if some of the inertial data is still received by the flight computer. If an engine fails when the flight computer is in the secondary mode, even though the thrust asymmetry compensation is not available, the rudder trim can be used to compensate for the yaw caused by uneven thrust. Another situation that has to be taken into consideration is the complete failure of the flight computer system. Whether it is in normal or secondary mode, the flight computer will switch to the direct mode. In direct mode, the majority of software features are unavailable. The aircraft has to be flown manually. The flight computer transfers control to the actuator control electronics. The ACE will now send direct signals to the control surface without any flight computer input. However, the ACE will still follow the degraded rudder ratio system. It will deflect the rudder up to 23 degrees in flaps down condition and restrict the deflection to 10 degrees in flaps up condition. This will provide structural protection to the rudder at high airspeed. The ACE will also allow the use of the rudder trim system for any unwanted rudder pedal force compensation. In the next chapter, we will understand the roll control features of the aircraft. Thanks for watching.